What's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be sharing you 20 best tips and tricks in Hood, Outlaws and Legends, which is a 4 vs 4 player vs player and also environment game that has a lot of stealth, action, as well as strategy in order to be successful in the game. So now, let's get straight into it. The first tip is distraction. You can press the distraction key or R in PC to start whistling to get attention for enemies to come towards you. If you hold R and show the rock on a particular location, the enemy will get distracted and moves away from you, which is easy for you to perform a stealth kill. Next, it's stealth kills. You can perform stealth kills as long as you're behind the enemies while crouching. The forest. So be sure to press that crouch button before you're able to repeatedly press the execute or a stealth kill on players or NPCs alike. Next is ranged stealth kills. By using a single shot to the head, will definitely take down a player or NPC as long as you're not hitting the armored parts. Knights will have armor on their head so you cannot do any damage with ranged attack on knights. The next tip is how to cancel ranged shot. If you're already holding the aim button and also holding the shoot button, you can cancel your shot by just releasing the aim button. And for PC, just release that right click. Next up, ropes. If you're using a ranged character, such as Robin or Marion, you can simply shoot the rope and it will deploy the rope to you, which you can then climb up. To climb down, just simply hold E while you're upstairs and your character will just glide down gracefully to the ground. The next tip is ammo and also throwable stash. You can find ammo boxes such as these which are useful for ranged characters such as Robin and also Marion to replenish your ammo. If you found stashes like this in the game, they are to resupply your throwables. So each four characters has their own unique throwable for Robin. It's a flashbang that will blind you for a few seconds. For Tuki, she will unleash this green toxic smoke. For NPC that is inside of the smoke will start coughing where you can just go behind them and start executing. I don't see any effects on players. It's just harder to see while in the green smoke. Similar to the black smoke from Marion, as you can see here. So if you're using Marion, have the dark smoke. Just be sure to press that crouch while you're behind the NPCs and players. And finally, Little John will have this um, grenade, where if you throw it will explode in an area of effect, which deals huge damage. The next tip is for the notorious sheriff of the Nottingham. He's huge, he's indestructible, he will one-shot anybody that get close to him. However, his weakness is he's very slow. Almost all of the characters can just sneak behind him and grab the key to his vault. You can't kill the sheriff or do any damage to him. However, you can use huge abilities such as Robin Ultimate or Little John Grenade to actually do damage to his health bar and he'll be paralyzed for a few minutes if his health bar is down to zero. The next tip is the vault itself. The vault is randomly generated throughout the map. It's not always fixed at the same spot. There'll be one or two guards, usually a knight is guarding the vault, but it's easily distracted with a stone. You just throw rocks and then just get behind him and execute him. It'll take some time for the vault to open and once it's open, the price is inside, which is the treasure box. The moment you pick up the treasure box, there'll be an alarm sounded, which means everyone is alerted and that location will be placed under lockdown. The next tip is the treasure chest, which you have to bring to the extraction point, which is the yellow marker, marker on the map. If you're using characters such as Robin, Marion, or even Tuki, they'll be slower when carrying the treasure chest compared to Little John because of its enormous strength. 
you will automatically drop the chest if you're getting shot. So if you want to drop it manually, simply press E on the interact button. Next up is about opening the gates. We're talking about the huge gates in the castles. So only little John will be able to lift these gates. So you can go to the gate and press E as little John and then you can press E again to drop down the gate. The gates, however, will be automatically open if the place is not under lockdown, which means there are no alerts. No one has been alerted, the gate will be open by default. But when there's lockdown, it will be closed and you'll need John for the job. The next tip is picking up arrows. If you're using Robin or Marion, if you shoot your arrows and you hit on the ground or on the enemy targets, you can actually go and pick it up. There'll be a timer for this until it despawns. Next is the armored NPCs. There are one heavily armored NPC type in the game, which is knights. So knights are heavily armored. If you use the range attack against them, they'll be invincible. So you can either melee them or execute them in this game. The next tip is how to shoot a hand crossbow by Marianne. So Marianne has a very unique mechanic here. So if you right click, it will aim. And then if you press the left click once, it will shoot once. You can however charge and hold your left click. So up to three bullets and shoot them on your enemies. The next tip is mark enemy players. You can mark NPCs, but most importantly is to mark enemy players. If you mark them, all your teammates can see them. They'll be, they'll be red on everybody's screen for quite some time. So it's very important to mark those targets. The next tip is how to spot the glint on enemies while they're aiming. So this is very important. If you see a glint, doesn't matter whether it's an NPC or a player, they're actually aiming at you. So either get out of sight or start evading before you get shot. In this play, I actually call out to my teammates that this guy is aiming. So my teammates are able to get behind him and finish him off. The next tip is dodging and blocking. If you're using Robin or Marianne, if you press space, it'll be the dodge key. However, if you're using melee characters such as Tuki or Lily John, it'll be the button for you to block. You can block projectiles and also melee. Next up is the medium range melee attack. So if you use Tuki, if you press right click, or oh, his a heavy attack is actually a range melee attack, which can deal huge damage at a quite reasonable range. Next is the best AoE melee attack. I'm quite surprised that two key light attacks has this huge AoE effect, which considerably good amount of damage. I'm able to take down like um. 5 to 6 NPCs without any issues. Alright, we're about to reach the end here and it's time to talk about ultimate abilities. With Robin, you can fire a charge shot. When it hits the target, it will blow up in AoE. So you can toggle your perks, for example, to blow off on the spot in a smaller radius or set off in a little bit of time but in huge radius. For Tuki, he will heal himself and everyone around his blue circle radius to full. This is a huge healing ability in the game. And also once you trigger this off, uh, Tuki will be able to see the whole map, like all the NPCs and maybe players in blue. Alright, Marion ultimate ability is stealth. While players can still see you in transparent, but NPCs are not able to see you at all, which means if they're alerted with a question mark on their head, it will steer away cancel, which means you can go to all the NPCs and crouch assassinate them. Finally, Little John's ultimate ability is to have unlimited stamina, which means you can just spam that right click and kill all the enemies around you. Alright, last but not least, the final tip for today is the hideout. I believe this is in Sherwood Forest where you can rest after each battle, you can do target practice, um, configure your perks, change your clothing, weapons, and also queue up for the next heist or next game mode that they're going to be adding into the game. 
And I believe the clothing and weapons can be unlocked to uh, battle pass system, which they haven't announced it at this moment, which I think they'll be releasing this soon. Um, and you can do challenges and also dailies, and I believe you can unlock more good stuff like weapon skin and clothing maybe. And I believe the most important thing that will affect your gameplay in Hideout is the perk section where you can set, um, you can choose three perks in three slots. They have a lot of perks which you can access when you level up higher. So some of these perks are really powerful and even game changer if you have them. I'm not gonna go through all the characters perks in this video. Perhaps on another video we can discuss that further. I hope you guys find this video useful. I would like to thank you guys for watching. If it does, you can consider giving it a thumbs up or even hitting that bell icon. It will help a lot. And we'll see you guys again next time.